Hi, good evening. Um, I'm aware this is the last session here for the day, so I'm going to just kind of talk you all through this, and then um, I think everyone's probably ready for the after party tonight. So um, my name's Emily. Um, I'm a UX consultant, so user experience consultant. Um, I'm working in London at the moment, but I also mentor with Google uh, Launchpad Mentors. Um, so I'm going to talk about wants and needs and how you can identify what's what. So this is supposedly one of Henry Ford's quotes, but um, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. Um, that's kind of obviously saying people are going to, they're going to give you an idea of what they want, but they don't necessarily know what it is that they need. So I'm going to talk through some of the things about human computer interaction, bit of psychology, bit of the research methods that UX consultants use and on, apply on a daily basis. Um, my background is a bit more lean UX, so quite iterative and startup area focused. So I'll kind of talk you through some of those things and hopefully give you an idea of things you can apply for your own businesses and startups. So human computer action, that's pretty straightforward. For some others, and not in the tech world, it's a bit more confusing. But um, it's basically how we interact with computers and systems. But it's really going with the user and the computer and how they work together rather than the system working one way and the user not being able to understand or use or, um, or know what they're, they're doing with the system. So the first rule of usability, as some say, is don't make me think. So users, we don't want them to go to your platform or your service or your app and get confused about what they need to do. They just want to be able to use it intuitively and get through and do what they, it is that they want to do. So we do this actually quite easily if it's something that is intuitive. So we've got two ways that we process information. There's system one and system two. There's the more um, automatic kind of subconscious gut feeling reaction to something. And then there's the conscious, which is more reflective. Like what are you, what are you thinking about? What are you deciding when you're buying a new phone or a house or something? You're, you're going to go through the, the goods, the bads, the pros, the cons. But if you're thinking like, oh, what do I want for lunch? That's more of an intuitive thing. So it's really a gut, gut feeling. Um, so that's, some of the decisions are made subconsciously. You're not necessarily aware of the fact that you've walked past somewhere and you smelt the bakery and you decided to go in and buy something. That's just a subconscious decision. Um, and there's also different levels of consciousness. So more uh, the behaviors that you do, how you feel, um, and then back to the reflective, how you think about things and digest them. So on top of that, just to add a bit more complexity to how we make decisions and how we want to get through apps and services and general life, um, we have different forms of self, so how we feel and think about ourselves and what we tell people that we feel. So in terms of UX and how we do this in, in uh, user experience design and research, we have to really look at what somebody actually just does. It's not about what they're telling you that they do, because we actually filter what we say and what we do and how we feel. So if you ask somebody like, oh, would you want to go and like, is, is donating blood a good thing and like giving blood? Yes, people are like, yeah, that's a good thing. And I, you know, everyone should do that. But it's like, well, you know, when was the last time that you gave blood? Uh -huh. uh, well, I haven't been, I've been busy. Uh, I, you know, I was on medication, I couldn't take, I couldn't do it, and I don't like needles. So it's kind of what you say you would do in the ideal world, and then what you actually do. So this is very interesting when it comes to, say, apps and services. Um, and there's a great book called The, the Mum Test, which I don't know if any of you have read or heard about, but it's, um, but it's all about this kind of thing that you can ask somebody, would you use this? Is this something that is interesting? You go like, yeah, actually, that's a really, really great app. I definitely need that. And then months later, it's like, well, did you actually download it? Did you use it? No. Um, so we need to do research into this to understand how we can optimize features or products to get right in there where people actually use something and they just they want to. It's not what they're telling you 
okay, I want to do this, and this sounds good, and this is perfect. It's really what they, it's what they need, and it just fulfills their need. So back to the, yeah, filtering. We might be rational. We might be deciding things. Uh, you know, you go, you go and have coffee. There's some interesting cakes lying there. You're going to go for a cake. You're not going to necessarily be like, oh, okay, well, this, this is how, what, you know, I, sh I shouldn't really have that, and I had that. It was, you just go, yeah, I fancy that cake. We'll do that one. Or you're, you're driving. You're driving around. You're kind of going like, okay, yeah, I'll just go this way. That's a shortcut. You don't make those really, really conscious decisions. Um, and when you're telling people about why you made a decision, you post-rationalize sometimes. You'd be like, well, I decided to do that because of this, because of this, because of this. Whereas actually, it was just automatic process, this is what I did. Uh, you can't really explain to somebody else why you made a certain decision if it's based on gut instinct. So even if we don't know that we're filtering what we're saying and we're editing our thoughts or opinions, we are. So again, we can't ask people what they want because they don't necessarily, we don't, we don't know, basically. So we want to really focus on designing what a customer needs and not what they want. Um, so this is um, a great thing if a mix of people in the crowd. Um, going from how the customer says that they wanted something all the way through to how different people have understood it. Everyone has a different mental model, different concept. And actually, at the end of the day, it's something what they need is completely different, maybe a lot more simple, and actually solving their problem. So just running through the different versions, um, my favorite is probably how the business consultant described it and how the customer was billed. Um, but what they really needed is just a tire just a little simple swing. Um, and to find out what it is that customers and users need, I'm going to go into some research. So coming from my background, uh, doing a lot of user research, user testing, there are a lot of different methods. And it is, it is time consuming. And a lot of people that we speak to and startups that I know they kind of just say, well, I had this idea, and I know that there's people who, who need this. And they'll use it. And you go like, OK, well, then how do you know that it's actually going to work? Um, so we can look at the product market fit. We can look at new features. We can use research to, to, to validate any kind of new idea, if it's a, a product itself or just a new feature. Um, but we're really going about validating that. So even if you do have a gut instinct of a good idea, just validate it. Make sure you're on the right track. If you decide to pivot, try it, test it. Um, and that's what we're going to go through now is how you can test some of these things. Um, so this is a, a nice little quote. Um, so you want empirical, observational, anecdotal methods or intuition. So again, how we make our decisions is not necessarily processing everything. You've got sometimes just got a gut feeling about why something works and why something doesn't. So to, well, back to kind of basics, I guess. Um, when you're thinking about your product, you need to know who your customer is. Um, it's great designing something that you think you would use or other people would use. That's, that's high level. It's really in depth. Who is this person? What do they do on a daily basis? How do they think? When are they going to use your service? Are they going to be in a busy, crowded environment? Are they going to be at home on their phone? Or are they going to be looking at something on their laptop and doing this alongside? You need to know exactly how they work. So to find out what it is they, they need and how we can design that, um, we want to look into what, what they actually, what their, what their goals are. So it's always about goals. What's the end goal? So as I mentioned, there's a lot of different methods to do this. And there's a lot of kind of psychological research and official ways of doing things. And, but you don't have to always go through a thorough, thorough testing process. It could be as simple as validate an idea, going out, literally out of the office, speaking to a few people, 
um, and getting their feedback, coming back in, digesting that, taking it in, moving forwards. Um, so there's a lot of these things with like diary studies that take ages, that you get somebody to fill in a journal and do something on a daily basis. Um, and some are good for some things and others are good for others, obviously. Um, but when it comes to startups or if you're working on something, an idea, you want to just try and validate quickly. There's no time for months and months of research that end up in documents on a, in a shelf somewhere. So method selection, it depends. It completely depends on what goal you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to get out of this research. Um, so there's the qualitative stuff, which is all data, and more, uh, sorry, <laughs> the qualitative, which is obviously more behavioral, like the really integral bits. And there's the quantitative stuff, which is the data. And the data does inform um, the, the more, you can get the idea for the qualitative stuff out of there. So for example, if you're checking your customer journeys and you're checking on Google Anal Analytics, you can see where they're going, where they're dropping off. That can help to inform you where that issue is, but it's only by doing the qualitative research that you're going to understand what the actual problem is. So there's also differences between more formal methods um, when you're in a lab and doing things like that, or eye tracking. Um, and then you've got the cheaper ones and the more expensive ones. So there's a, a huge variety, and this is just some of them. Um, somebody's put them onto a nice, interesting graph to make it look all serious. But obviously, it's going between attitudes, behaviors, um, and how you can apply different methods. And I'm not. I'm not going to say, oh, try this one, try that one, and for this thing, you have to follow that. And I want to do this, so I'm going to do some um, unmoderated remote panel studies. I mean, that it's just a bit much. Um, but generally, these are the kind of things that we want to try and fix, and we want to, questions we want to answer. And you can kind of then see roughly how that approach and that way of testing might work. So personally, um, coming from, like I mentioned earlier, more of a, a lean background, um, I really encourage you to kind of look into something that's more behavioral and looking into the qualitative research. Numbers are good, numbers are great, but especially at the beginning when you're trying to validate something, you need real opinions, you need real insights, not just this number said that, because unfortunately, those numbers can be twisted as well and looked at in a certain way. It doesn't really give you the whole big picture. So getting that first-hand customer research, customer feedback, so useful. Um, and also testing in a more of a natural environment. So if you've got an app that you think they're going to be using, to, so say your, say your app is uh, a wayfinding app, so you're trying to get around, you're trying to get from A to B, you're not going to be sitting in a lab whilst using that. You're going to be out on the street, people rushing past you, crowds. You're going to maybe be in a foreign country, so you don't understand the signs around you. You're trying to look for you know, where you are on the map, all that kind of thing. You've, you'll get a completely different response to what you've designed when it's being in its natural environment. So if you can, always try and test in the most, well, as close as possible natural environment. And also just make it informal, make it easy. Don't, we don't want to start putting pressure on people when we're testing. You want their real kind of instinct and relax so they don't start filtering. We're going back to what it is they, they actually need. So rather than them consciously deciding, I think this, is, this would be better or this would be better, it's kind of going like, oh yeah, this works this way. And uh, so we're gonna go into some more things on that. Um, so lean, Probably everyone's familiar with, yes, the Lean Startup. And obviously, I've had a few laughs already. <laughs> it's a familiar concept. But this is quite a good one if you want to look into um, applying some of the UX and user experience. Um, it's the same kind of principles. Um, and we have, obviously, Lean UX Manifesto. But it's all about working together, collaborating, and really solving user problems really finding out what the, what the needs are, what's the core problem, and how you're going to fix that. Um, so some of the things I've already mentioned, applying appropriate tools. You don't need to follow rigid plans. You don't need to be documenting everything, paperwork, follow through. Just kind of get, get on with it. 
So don't research solutions, discover problems. Don't go, this is, I've, I've solved it, this is what we're doing. Find out why, why, that need, why is that needed? In what kind of context? Who needs your solution? So to discover problems, Build, measure, learn. Think, make, check. Similar kind of thing. There's a lean UX cycle. There's a UX cycle. You run through and you test. Um, so you find out what, what are your desired outcomes. What is it that you want to find out? Um, what are your assumptions about everything? What do you th Everyone obviously has some kind of experience and knowledge about the field that they're building a service for. So what are your assumptions there? How can you go and test those? And then design an experiment. Something quite simple, something quite easy. But if possible, have an MVP prototype something to just represent your idea and your concept. And then get out the building. Go and speak to people. Obviously, find out, you know, try and get to, again, natural environment or the type of person that would hopefully be a, a future customer and then get your whole team involved. That's not saying that you should have a design team that is running out there to do this on their own. They come back and say, OK, guys, now this is what we build. Get everyone involved. It's so useful to have everyone on the same page. And develop, I've worked quite closely with developers always. And to have them come with a solution to the problem that I'm trying to solve is just brilliant. Because they say, well, actually, we can just fix it in this way. We can build it in this way. Easier. Um, so there's a few tools like this, kind of trying to prep. Um, this is probably the most documenting you, you, could, you really need to do, apart from like taking notes and stuff. But just make sure you've got all areas covered, kind of about location, who your users are, who's going to be doing what, who's responsible for coffee, who's responsible to you know, do all that kind of thing. Um, if you're going to be recording it, Make sure you've got a battery light or enough charge. There you go. It's easy. Simple, but sometimes you forget. You're halfway doing a lot of research, and uh, you know, your, your, your phone runs out, and that's it. You're done. Um, so what are your goals? Again, going back to what is your hypothesis, try and find out what you as a team need to know. State your desired outcomes. Uh, so set your own goals. Ask everyone questions. Get everybody to discuss this together. Um, don't just say, OK, this is me on my own. I'm going to go. I think this is the thing. We're going to go test that. And then collaboratively go test it. Collaboratively decide what your goals are and what you want to try and get out of it. Because sometimes you can combine different goals into one thing. So you can test one, one, one concept, but actually throw some others in there by asking additional questions around it. So yeah, go through the like, problems that you might have. Again, just get everything out on paper, discuss it, um, so everyone's on the same page. Everyone knows what they're on about. And then what's your hypothesis? What is, do you think is the most likely outcome? And then also, if you want to go into measurements, you can, you sh you can get some metrics on that. So going into a bit more practical stuff, how do you actually go and do this? So design an experiment, as mentioned earlier. Have a kind of idea of what it is you want to do, what you want to get out of it. Make that MVP, so prototype. It could be a paper prototype. It could be um, something that, sorry, <laughs> missed that slide. Um, but it could be anything, as long as it's something you can put in front of a user and or a customer, a potential customer, and they can have a look at it and give you their instinctive feedback. If you're just asking questions, then they're focusing too much on what they're responding, what you should be saying, or what they should be saying, and what they think you want to hear. So get out there, get some tasks, maybe like a, a case, a use case of how somebody would use it. Don't just put it in front of them and say, OK, is, is this nice? Do you, do you like this? Um, you might like something, but get really frustrated when you can't press a certain button because it, 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 it's just not working. So as much as you like it, it's not functional. It's not something that you need. 
So going into goals, again, look at the context of what it is you're, you're producing. What are they trying to achieve with your app or with your service? How are you going to help them? How do they currently do this? So why, why is your way, why is your service or your app going to be an improvement on how things currently work? What makes that bad? So what are the really key pain points that they tend to have on, on a regular basis whilst trying to achieve this goal? And then how can you improve it or how can you change it? So those are the kind of things you want to bear in mind when you're doing research and testing, validating ideas. Testing, quite simple. You only need to speak to about five people initially to validate an idea. Um, you don't need to go through tons and tons of people, loads and loads of online research. If you have five people and about three of them have the same idea and same response, that's quite a good indication of what something, of that, if you're heading in the right direction or not. Um, if you can, recruit participants. You can do this online. There's lots of tools and apps where you can do that. And you can kind of screen them. So you can say, I want this kind of age group. The whole thing about this is in screening is to make sure, again, that you're speaking to the right people. If you're showing um, a friend who's really into, into startups, into tech, something that is very complex, they're going to think about it in a different way to, say, uh, an elderly person who, who is at home trying to like, you use that app. So for example, you've got something on Netflix, whatever, that might be really straightforward for some people, but put it in front of my mum and she's going to get stuck. Um, so make sure it's the right kind of people that you're speaking to and they can give you the right feedback. So again, back to the location and context of use. Make sure it's as close to natural as possible. And then also plan your timings because um, you might get exhausted doing testing and all that. It does, it does get quite intense if you're getting the feedback and the research and you're trying to remember everything and take notes. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for having us. So if you want to actually run a formal session, this is one way of doing it. Just kind of you know, get people in if, that is, if you're going to be doing it in more of a, a kind of lab environment. Again, not necessary. But if you've got the space and time, so say, for example, you've got a desktop app, and you would get people to come and sit in an environment where they are at a desktop in a kind of office space and then get them to test it in that natural environment. Um, if you want to record, obviously make sure you're allowed to do that. So it's all the kind of formalized stuff. <laughs> Sorry, party started, obviously. Um, but yeah, so find out the why. So these are some do's and don'ts. So even if your product is finished, and these are just like some tips that you can hopefully apply, say that it isn't. Because if people, this is going back to the psychology of it, if they know that something's not quite finished yet, they're more open to give you feedback. If, you know, if they know that it's kind of nearly there, but there's still going to be fixes, there's still going to be room for improvement, they're going to give you more honest feedback because they know that it's not, you're not, they're not ruining the whole thing. So even if it is a finalized product or a finalized idea, you just want to just tell people it's not so that they, they feel happy and more comfortable giving you that. Again, say I didn't design this, even if you did, even if you built it, even if it was your idea and the, you know the whole concept inside out, You've got to kind of lie a little bit at this point because you want, again, the person that you're speaking to to give you the most honest feedback that they can. Really important. Tell the person that you're not, just remind them that you're not testing them because you want to know how your app or how your tool is working. You want to, you want to make sure that they're using it just in a natural way. It's not enforced, it's not thought through, it's going back to that system one, system two. It's just remove any kind of formal thinking, basically. So going back to like, don't make users think. Just let, make, let them do it. Um, but if you are asking them to think, think aloud. So you can start to find out why, why, certain, why they're doing certain things. 
So for example, they're scrolling through looking for a certain button. They're going to keep, or, or, so like you've got a news feed, and they keep scrolling, they keep scrolling. You don't know why they're scrolling. You don't know necessarily what it is they're looking for. So encouraging them to think aloud is basically just getting them to, to say, well, I'm, trying, I'm, I'm looking through here because I want to find out you know, how to get to my best friend's new post or old post about this. You, you just want them to explain it and kind of vocalize their thoughts. So the, more during the, the testing session, some more questions, do's and don'ts, very straightforward. So also be informal. Be informal about stuff. So if you are chatting, just get them into a relaxed, relaxed frame of mind. Again, this is a natural thing. It shouldn't be a testing environment. It shouldn't be a formal, OK, now we're doing this, and you're going to tell me this, and then this is transaction. Thank you, goodbye. It's kind of like, look, this is my service. This is my app. Let's go through it. Just, just let me know what you think. And if you do, if you start off properly with a bit of small talk, it just sets it up to be a bit more informal. So even if you know who they are and what they do, just kind of get into that. And it also helps you to validate, are they the right type of person to speak to right now? Do, is this the right kind of feedback that I want? For, or is this the right kind of person that I want to get feedback from? Um, if you are facilitating the session or running the testing, don't stand there with a notepad taking notes, because that just makes it seem so awkward. I mean, imagine you're, you're standing there, somebody's asking you questions, just writing down everything you're saying. Um, it's, it, kind of, it kind of spoils the flow a little bit. But if you, if you are observing or you're not fully involved, do definitely take notes, because there is a lot coming out of it, and there's a lot going on that you're not necessarily going to remember afterwards, especially if you are speaking to five people in a row. There's a lot of stuff coming out there. So if you can record it even, something like that, get your phone out, just record it, get that feedback in. Um, types of questions to ask are really, really important. So don't ask leading questions. So um, for example, if you're going through, a, if, if you've got a shopping app or shopping website, say, OK, so what would you, how, what would you do if you wanted to buy a dress in this size or a pink, a, a, the pink dress in this size? Don't tell them what they're looking for. Just kind of vaguely introduce it and then start to maybe bring on stuff about dresses or clothing or whatever. But don't define and don't tell them what to do. Don't give them instructions. It's more of the open-ended thing of like giving, giving clues to, for a treasure hunt. It's so much ex more exciting and interesting to see how they're going to solve that, that's that problem themselves rather than just pointing them what they should do. Um, don't ask multiple choice questions or yes or no questions. So saying, do you like this one or this one? Or do you think that works better or that works better? Because it just gives them that, what, what if they don't like either? That you're not giving them that option and that freedom to, to give a response. So the five W's and one H. <laughs> Who, what, where, when, why, and how. So really trying to get into the details of what it is they're trying to do here. So if you're talking them through your, your website, really try and find out what it, is, what it is they're thinking. It's all about how people are responding and how they're using it intuitively. If they have questions, don't tell them what the answer is. Ask what they're expecting. It gives you so many good insights into what, how they would expect your service to work or how your app would work. So if you click on this button, what do you expect will happen next, rather than, if they, rather than just telling them this is what's going on? Um, ask some broken or vague questions as well. It's quite an interesting way of doing things, because you can start just talking about something and then trail off. And they'll fill in the blanks themselves, or answer the question, or say something that kind of makes sense to them, rather than just responding to a, a fully formed question that you've defined for them. 
again, don't point them in the right direction if they get stuck. Don't tell them what they should be doing. If they're using your app and you're testing it with them, you want to know how they're going to do it on their own. Because you're not going to be there when they're using your, your, your service, your app. They're going to do it on their own. And the thing is that if they get frustrated or give up or kind of get annoyed with, with what they're doing when you're there, imagine how it would be if you weren't there. They would have given up a long time ago. They might not have even gotten to that stage yet. So no, never point them in, the right, in, in a certain direction. A little thing is sometimes just, just be quiet. I know that's contradicting what I said earlier of getting them to, you know, encouraging them to think loud and all that, but just, just kind of wait for it. Let them digest. You don't really know what it is they're thinking and what, how, they're, how they're working. They might just be kind of taking, taking a moment to take it all in and be like, right, I don't quite get this. And that's actually more interesting. So if they've, like, look out for reactions, facial expressions, um, body movements, things like, you know, sitting back and just going like, hmm. Like, that is much more interesting um, than, than what they might be trying to say of trying to vocalize. So try and get, again, into the most natural environment as possible where people can just, that silence isn't awkward. They can feel comfortable just thinking and digesting. Um, had this one happen quite a few times, but don't panic if the prototype or your website or your product and everything stops working, because that will happen anyway. Like, it's going to happen at some point. Um, and just like I said earlier, we want the informal environment. We don't want it to be like, oh gosh, okay, this stopped working and now this has happened and stressy, stressy. It's just like, okay, cool, all right, well, let's just continue chatting about this. And you can always get something more out of them. If you're in a frame of mind, they're in the frame of mind of talking through your system, you've got the user's time, make use of it. It is so valuable to get any kind of feedback that you can. Um, and nudge them if necessary. This is not going and like point them in a certain direction, but continuously kind of be like, so wh wh what, are you, what are you thinking now? And yes, we just said be quiet. Watch for reactions, watch for all that. But you can also encourage them in a little way to just, just vocalize. And again, this is the most important one, re well, I would say, is watch and observe. So you want those reactions. That is how you're going to find out how they're, how they're responding psychologically, their, their intuitive kind of things. If they suddenly sigh, and they get confused, or you can see that, that in their face, you're, you know that there's a problem there before they've said anything. They don't need to say anything. You know. And they might be like, oh, I don't, oh, okay, yeah, I see it. And then they understand. But just having that slight, like, faltering, I'm not sure about this, is a sign that maybe that's not that great. Maybe that feature, that button, that, that layout doesn't quite work, and it can be improved on. So, Sometimes the most interesting things is what they don't say. And this is going back to if they say they want something, might not actually be true. So when you've done any of these kind of testing sessions or you've done research, um, really do still use this time with your users or with these customers and find out what was different. How does your thing differ? It's not it's not just kind of being like, right, here's my app, isn't it great? Okay, cool, then off. Find out how they really felt about it in terms of like what they know about other features, other, other apps, other services that work in a similar way. Um, you can ask them what they like and they dislike, potentially, but this is not going back to finding out what it is they want, because asking them what they like and what they don't like, or what is missing, can give you an idea of, of where, their th where their thinking is. So it's not completely defining what it is that you want to, what it is that you need to design. It's not going like, okay, this is, this is exactly, I've got this whole fully designed solution in my head, but they can, and you have to listen to what the users are saying and what they're giving you. It's just kind of going like, okay, so they're starting to think around these lines, we'll work around that. So take that, just take it on as feedback. 
And also, um, if you can, get people to come back for more research and see if they, they know anyone else who'd be interested and willing to kind of maybe help you to, to test on a regular basis or run this in front of like, run through this on a, on a weekly basis maybe as you can do. Going back to kind of the lean, the lean UX process, you want to have the team on board. You want the team to be on the same page. So if, you, if you've gone out and done research on your own, make sure you come back and you tell the others. Um, make sure those notes, those recordings, whatever you've got might be available so that others can have a look through and you can digest it together rather than just doing this all on your own and keeping it all in your own head. So there's a whole kind of additional bit and like you can go into much more depth on how you start coding responses and answers and if that's what you want to do. But going back to more of the lean way, you just need to find out what, is, what are the key learnings here, what are emerging patterns, how can we apply these and then move on, then design, iterate. And then, and then repeat. So keep testing every, every stage along the way. You can't ever say that something's final and that is, is done. That one feature, yep, solve that problem, moving on to the next. Continuously test everything and validate your idea or your solution. If you've come up with one that you think is great, doesn't matter, test it. Um, and what some people do, there's, and there's like the ideas of, of sprints and we, like the Google Ventures sprint of going through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, users are in, testing, that's it. You only have those four days beforehand to get something together to put out in front of them. And if you have those kind of manufactured deadlines that you're working towards, then you're putting pressure on yourself. So make sure that you kind of move it a little bit for a faster pace. So in summary, back to the real simple thing, don't expect customers to think. Be, make sure everything is intuitive as possible and they're not and that when you're doing these kind of, this kind of research, any research along the way, don't expect them to give you a, a fully formed answer. You want their, their real, you want their needs to come out. Discover the problems, don't design solutions. So what are the problems? Where are they hesitating? Where are they faltering in your app or service? What is not working for them? Um, be lean. You don't necessarily have to, but it's the quickest, easiest way to kind of run through these things. You don't have to be all complex about it. Ask the right questions, look out for the reactions, and really uncover the why. And just to finish, I've got a few like resources and tools that are really, really good for any kind of doing this on your own. Some, some good books, some just interesting kind of things to really go into the testing if you want to go into this a little bit further. but. Um, honestly, just keep testing things along the way. Always get your research. It's so crucial to get that input from users about their needs um, and how you're going to solve those problems for them. Great. So everyone have a lovely evening tonight. Um, I'll probably see everyone at the after party. But thank you. <laughs>